Hey again, it's Stephanie. I am here to show you a foundation routine that gives you nearly flawless skin that feels natural and looks natural. Um, it was a foundation routine that I used on myself the other day and I had really good results. So I wanted to share with you. Um, I'm going to dive right into it. No, no point in chatting too much. Go ahead and take off my, my goggles. Have my hair already pulled back and everything. So you can see this beat up mug. <laughs> I'm going to start out by prepping my skin and priming with the Perfect Skin Perfecting Gel. And I chose Luminous because everybody wants to be luminous, right? Um, they have a couple of different options for um, different primers that you could use for radiance. There's one that's clear. I wanted this one to just brighten me up a little bit. Um, it minimizes the pores. It controls shine, reduces redness, smooths, primes, and perfects. And I'm just going to do about a pea-sized amount and rub it into my fingertips and warm it up because that's what I like to do. The difference between this primer and other primers is you're going to press it into the skin as opposed to rubbing. With this particular primer, rubbing is pretty useless. Press, press, press. And I already prepped my skin in the previous video that I did. So I had my skincare routine posted as well. So now that that's finished, I'm going to move on to <clears throat> the second step. The second step is the Perfect Eye Perfection Gel. This one has a metal tip, which is cold, which feels good around the eye area. You're just going to squeeze it ever so gently. And I like to use a little boat method around my eye. It feels so good. Oh, wow. That's the stuff. I don't know if you can see a difference already, but unprimed, primed. Maybe you'll see a difference. More product for the other eye. I'm focusing heavily in those areas where I tend to be blue or brown. I tend to be brown right underneath my lash line and then blue where my dark circles are. I'm over boating on this just because it feels really good. And then I'll put the prices for these products in the down bar. The Perfect tends to be a little bit more expensive, but it's really, it's really worth it. If you have the money to invest in a good primer that does all the things that I listed, I would definitely recommend the Perfect. Um, the foundation that I'm going to be using today is by MAC Cosmetics, and it's the Face and Body. And the shade is N2. For neutral and I'm just going to put a little bit of product about the size of a dime I'm using a mirror as a palette right now I would show you but it would reflect <laughs> and I'm going to take my real techniques um, stippling brush I got that at Ulta and I'm just going to tap the bristles in and then move it over to the side to make a bigger spot. I'm actually rubbing off a little bit of the product or tapping off a little bit of the product. The trick to this foundation is starting in your T-zone and then because that's where you usually need the most coverage. And I'm just going to kind of stipple on the sides of my nose because that's where most people have the most imperfections and enlarged follicles, pores. <laughs> I 
I'm going to tap right here because my pores are a little enlarged in between my brows. But you can blend it up into your hairline. Take a little more product. The, the trick to this is to build. It's a, a, it, you build it to, you can build it to a medium coverage. My chin. I like the stippling brush because to me it seems as though it gets the product on, but it gives you a much better finish. Tap on my nose, knock out some of that redness that the primer didn't, the sides of my nose. And then I'm going to focus on the outer part of my face. I'll try to gently conceal some of those blemishes. And I'm alternating between buffing it on my skin and using my stippling motion. And I don't have perfect skin, so I'm going to, I'm using a little bit more than other people may need to. The good thing about this foundation is it's great for women who are 40 and up because it hydrates your skin. It's so lightweight and wearable. I'm even going to bring some of this up underneath my eye area. Tap, stipple. It already looks better. I think that looks pretty good. I'll add just a little bit more, just in case. And like I said, it's so you're using such a small amount of product anyway. It may seem as though I'm clumping it on, but I'm really not. And it really feels like I don't have anything on my skin. That's great. Now that that portion's finished, I'm gonna move on to concealer. And I'm using the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer. Yeah, this is NW20. I should have known that. I've been using it forever. But there were a couple of times where I got NW15. It was a bad idea. Um, so I won't be doing that again. I'm going to take my Beauty Blender, which is already hydrated, and I'm going to tap, a, tap the tip a little bit into the product. Whenever you are concealing under your eyes, look down. So that way you see all the different textures under your eye because for me, I have a deep dark ridge here, but then I have a little bit of puffiness, the outer part of my eye. So have to be mindful of that while I'm concealing. I also like to bring it into the inner part of my eye closest to my nose because that's already going to brighten me up. I live my life behind eyeglasses so I have to compensate, overcompensate. The second eye This feels so nice. The Beauty Blender is a magical tool. Magical, magical. I've tried all the other ones that 
people have told me are just as good and I just didn't care for them as much. I like this one the most. I'm also going to take the very tip of my beauty blender and I'm going to use that for blemishes. I have one right here on my neck. Hormones are awesome. I have one right by my mouth. One at my hairline. Well, I have about 570, but the really red ones are the ones that I'm going to neutralize. And the trick is using your concealer to fill in the spots where the foundation doesn't give you as much coverage. Tap, tap, tap. <clears throat> I'm also going to take my Sigma Precision Flat Angled P88 brush and I'm going to go by, behind myself with my concealer just in this really deep ridge. You can either stipple with these brushes or you can stroke gently. Gently, gently. And then the way you know if you're properly concealed is holding your head back. If you still see those dark circles whenever you hold your head back, then you're not properly concealed. But I don't see any more. I don't see any more when I hold my head back. When I'm looking at you straight on, you can probably still see them. But it's because we're not flat underneath our eyes and there's texture and there's ridges and there's creases and there's this and there's that and most of the people that you'll see on YouTube have that perfect lighting for their videos to where their skin looks flawless and I bet it's not. Anyway, <coughs> excuse me. I finally got some more of the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder. Um, I'm going to use this with my beauty blender and also dip the tip of it and I'm just going to tap under my eye area or in my eye area with the brightening powder. This look gives you a natural brightening around the eye. You're not going to be lit up like a Christmas tree under your eyes. And you're also not going to look like a raccoon in photos. And then now it's set, but you aren't going to be dry under your eye area. I hope that makes sense. Um, then, last but not least, I am going to finish with my MAC Skin Finish. Mineralized Skin Finish Natural. It's so hard to remember the names of everything. My brain can only hold so much. I'm also going to take my airbrush powder brush from Sephora. And I'm just going to pat it into the product. And the same thing goes for my face. In the T-zone, where I get a little bit more shiny, I'm going to tap and press it in. That's not really pressing, but I'm tapping. You get the idea. Little bit there. Then the rest of it, I'm just going to lightly circle into the product. Do the same on my face. And it feels ultra, ultra lightweight. That's important.
and that is the completed routine for the MAC Face and Body Foundation. Just a little more perfected. Um, I mean, by no means flawless, but it's a very lightweight, natural looking makeup. You can see. I mean, it still has a little bit of a glow. It has a satin finish. You may notice when you use the face and body, it takes a moment to dry. It feels a little tacky at first, but just give it a chance to actually dry. And once it once 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 it does, um, it's it it's matte and it's very low transfer. So if you're hugging your friend. Um, you don't have to necessarily worry as much about getting half of a face print on their lovely purple sweater. Um, that's all for today. Hopefully some points of this regimen will work for you or if you were interested in the MAC face and body but didn't really know how to use it or to apply it. I would definitely recommend it. You get this huge bottle. Huge. It's huge. And you can use it on your legs too. You can use it on your arms, pretty much anywhere. That's why it's called face and body. Anyway, enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.